This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 8th of December 2021 and I am AX. I am CS. And I am JM. In case you missed the headlines this morning, here they are. In the Daily Nation, Ryla beats Oka to win Tycoon's backing for 2022. Mm -hmm. In the Standard, Killer Cop's last call and love turned sour. In the star, Kabete killings. Survivors tell of shootings horror. And in People Daily, how deranged cop shot dead six within minutes. Mm. My oh my. Yeah, yeah. my oh my indeed. <laughs> See us kick us off though. Yeah, I think um, the old saying should be uh, changed and it should now be uh, hell hath no fury like a policeman <laughs> who has been scorned mm -hmm. because of love. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the Daily Nation is highlighting that Raila has family secured the backing of the Mount Kenya Foundation. Now, this is hardly breaking news. There was really only one right answer to the multiple choice question. Of course, some may ask why Ruto wasn't interviewed and considered as an option. Did the Mount Kenya Foundation give Ruto the contempt card? Or maybe they're telling us that this man shouldn't even be part of the discussion on who should be president. It is tempting to think so. But a more plausible reason is that Ruto removed himself from the equation altogether. Why do we say so? This is about populism versus elite consensus. Mm. William Ruto has repeatedly told us that he will go directly yep. to the people. Uh -huh. And he has told us that his model comprises of two things, the people and God. Mm -hmm. This is why he goes directly to the people and says, Buona asifiwe. <laughs> Populism 101. This appeal to populism is also why repeatedly you will see Ruto constantly announcing how many MPs and elected leaders are with him. You will see him parading them at Karen and mm -hmm. making a big show of defections to his camp. This is despite the fact that on average 60 to 70 percent of MPs don't get re-elected. So he's building his castle on sand instead mm. of steady rock. Mm. Raila used to subscribe to this model once upon a time. Mm. In fact, he used to say, Vox Populi, Vox Dei, that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm. This was before Raila had a Damascus moment that led him to abandon the misleading hype of populism and to embrace the gospel of elite consensus. Mm. He realized that you do not seek power by first going to the masses. Mm. That is where you finish. This is why Professor Mutai Ngunyi has all along maintained that a person cannot make themselves president. Mm -hmm. A person has to be made president. So what is elite consensus? It means that you start with a small but critical few that consists of members of the economic elite, the leaders of ethnic or regional groupings, mm -hmm. and the policy planning networks. This critical few hold the most power compared to the trivial majority of the masses who, though they are numerous, as individuals, they are too scattered and diverse. Mm -hmm. Where the masses are, there is no concentration of power. Yep. And these masses can even turn against you because whatever opinion they had formed as individuals will often be abandoned closer to the election when they are won over by community interests. Indeed. They will be won over because the community will tell them that the populist promise that Ruto has made to individuals cannot compete with agreements entered into with entire communities. Mm -hmm. While Ruto has made promises to all the Boda Boda riders and Mamambogas across the country who have no way of following up on the, those promises, in contrast, community elites can go to Raila and say, this is what you promised. Mm -hmm. So for the people in UDA across the country, you need to do some soul searching and ask yourselves, who will speak for you when Ruto doesn't deliver bottoms up mm -hmm. and you can't access him? Never mind that we still don't understand what bottoms up is anyway. Mm. Mm. And maybe that is why he's making vague promises because it then becomes a headache trying to hold him accountable, like trying to grab smoke with your hands. Yeah. Mm. Rail, on the other hand, even before asking you for your vote, he has gone to the four corners of the Republic and held discussions across the country with the community representatives and economic el elites who are the owners of capital and who have a lot to lose. Mm. The influence of those elites will percolate downwards 
through the appropriate channels resulting in a more reliable and efficient mm. mobilization of the people in a common direction. Mm. Seen in this light, the decision by the Mount Kenya Foundation can then be understood as a powerful and ringing endorsement. Mm -hmm. It is a model that appreciates the complexities of society by reconciling the reality of regional interests, democracy, and capitalism. The William Ruto model, however, is relying on a first-year definition of democracy, and it is a utopian fallacy. If indeed the voice of the people was the voice of God, then once upon a time, the voice of the people would never have said, we want Barabbas. Mm. Tafakari Hayo. Mm, mm, mm. All Absolutely. right. So as we draw nearer to the end of the year, we are afforded a moment to reflect on the year that has been. Yeah. In the hullabaloo of 2021, I couldn't help but wonder, why does nothing stick to William Ruto? Mm. Like, how is it possible that a man whose CV allegedly, of course, includes money laundering, the ICC, and abandoning one's post is not held accountable, mm. at least not by his supporters? In fact, if you ask them, none of these things matters. What matters is that he will get their bottoms up, or whatever it is he's going to do. Point is, nothing sticks to Ruto. Mm. He is the non-stick frying pan of our politics. He is so unsticky that even Ugali cannot stick to him. Mm -hmm. And so today, I want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Why does nothing stick to William Ruto? And what are the implications of his unstickiness? So you see, nothing sticks to William Ruto because nothing is allowed to stick to William Ruto. Mm -hmm. In order for something to stick to anyone, you need glue. And as a matter of public discourse, that glue stick is applied by the fourth estate, yeah. estate or rather it ought to be. Could it be that in the last year, the fourth estate has more often than not abdicated its responsibility to fully and accurately report to Kenyans what their leaders are doing? Mm. One need only look at today's standard. Today's headline, as JM told you, was a story about Constable Mbatu's final moments before he committed the erratic murders. But on page eight, we learn that witnesses have declined to testify against Kisheru at ICC. Mm. And in light of this revelation, I must ask, why was this not the headline? Why did the standard choose not to highlight a story on a case that might implicate a presidential candidate, a case that speaks to the character of said candidate and mm -hmm. therefore a case of national import. Well, according to American journalist David Shaw, the fourth estate has effectively allowed themselves to be used. Yes. They, the gatekeepers of public accountability, seem to have those gates closed to William Ruto, at least where it really matters. And if this is the trend for 2020, I worry for 2021. Given that, and according to Malcolm X, media has the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent, I can't help but wonder how the media will use this power next year. Who will join Ruto as a non-stick frying pan in the cupboard of our politics? All this is to say is that there is a time and place for non-stick frying. Mm -hmm. The kitchen at breakfast comes to mind, and mm. politics is not one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that the fourth estate is being reckless with their power, mm. thank God for the fifth estate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, today, I would like to submit that the race is not always to the swift. And mm. here I am comparing Ryla and Ruta in the race to State House. In many ways, the contest has shaped up much like the proverbial hair and tortoise fable. Relative to Ryla, Ruta has had undue advantage. Mm. Yes. He's had time, incumbency and state resources. Let me briefly remind you of the fable. Hair makes fun of Tortoise for being slow. Mm -hmm. Tortoise challenges Hair to a race. Mm -hmm. Halfway through, Hair takes a nap to spite Tortoise. He oversleeps and then he wakes up to find that he's been completely overtaken by Tortoise. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, Hair fails to catch up and therefore Tortoise wins. Mm -hmm. This then is what we call the Tortoise strategy in politics. The Tortoise strategy resembles the approach that a marathon runner would adopt. The key is to, throughout the race, keep a steady pace and remain sure-footed. Mm. In our context today, as I said, Ryla is the tortoise, Ruto mm. the hare. Yeah. Mm. Running for the fifth time, Ryla, unlike Ruto, who started the race to succeed his boss from the day they entered State House in April of 2013, kicked off his Azimiola Umudra campaign only recently in mid-August. Mm. Since then, he has built his Azimiola Umodra campaign in small installments, cumulatively. Mm. The best part is, 
it is turning out to be a cohesive and rock solid platform on which he will build his vision for Kenya. An example here is his pledge of uh, 6K to the neediest of Kenyan families mm -hmm. that he's done already on the campaign trail. In addition to that, he has put his feet on the streets tirelessly, meeting with locals around the entire country, diligently and painstakingly listening to concerns and putting across his message. In this contest, he is coming off, therefore, uh, more as the credible and the methodical, sincere candidate. Yes. Like the tortoise, he will win by steady plodding. And the idea here is that the campaign trajectory should resemble a bell curve, mm. beginning slow, mm. peaking right at election time. Mm. It should not resemble, like William Ruto's, a straight line ramp with most of the energy coming near the end of the campaign. For yourself as a candidate, you know, the idea is to conserve your energy and this is why the bell curve is recommended. Mm -hmm. And for the electorate, the idea is to vary the rhythm of the campaign, to break the monotony, you know, to vary the pace. Mm -hmm. But finally, there is a part B to the tortoise strategy. Mm -hmm. And that is the application of the book and effect. Mm -hmm. Ryland knows more than Ruto does that Kenyans are susceptible to the primus, uh, to the uh, primacy and recency effect. Yeah. Mm. Now, if you're given a list of items to remember, human beings tend to remember the first few things more than the things in the middle. Mm. More importantly, during this campaign, we will remember as Kenyans the last few things more than those things in the middle and even those things mm. at the beginning. Mm. But the idea that Baba seems to have been uh, executing here in regard to his, to his campaign is to start with a bang mm. and, and then also end with a bang. Yes. Mm. Two different approaches there mm -hmm. to uh, how to conduct campaigns. Now, shall we assess the headlines briefly? Mm. Topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking? and thoughtful or just plain lazy. I'm particularly drawn to the Daily Nation. Same here. Same. Yes, I mean, the rest are topical, but uh, uh, yeah, Daily Nation nonetheless. Daily Nation. I'm gonna toss the rest. <laughs> okay, f fantastic. Great job, great job there. Okay, on to the political pieces we call cartoons. Mm -hmm. Humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic. Mm -hmm. Effective or just plain lazy. Mm. Shall we begin with the standard? Of mm. course. Okay, mm. so um, on, on your screen, you're going to be seeing the standard cartoon. In it, the cartoon alludes to the children's fairy tale, the Pied Piper. Um, and in the story, the, there's some guys told, brought into a town to drive all the rats out with music. Um, however, in this cartoon, the rat is the one driving all the people, but the rat is the one using the music. Meanwhile, the IABC someone is just standing there looking aghast, mm -hmm. watching all these people mesmerized by a rat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. A uh, little humorous. I quite like this rendition of the rat. Same mm. here. My main worry is that you kind of need to know what the story of the Pied Piper is mm. in order to understand what's going on here. So I'm not mm. sure if that impedes okay. its so understandability. Toss this one, yeah, mm. throw toss it out. It okay, okay. Shall we consider the, the star? The star. Mm. You can see an image of a sinking ship that has just hit an iceberg. Mm -hmm. I suppose this calls to memory the famous Titanic. <laughs> it implies that Jubilee is the Titanic and the iceberg uh, that sunk it is in the shape of Mount Kenya. <laughs> but that is where you go wrong. Because if the iceberg is Mount Kenya, <laughs> then the ship is UDA. <laughs> Why? Because Gemma will make or break Ruto's candidacy. Mm -hmm. Point blank. Period. Ruto mm -hmm. needs 90% of the Gemma vote. Right now, he barely has 40 to 50%. So um, that ship uh, should be UDA. And if indeed people are jumping out of the Jubilee ship, it would mean they were jumping into uncertain mm -hmm. waters because there's mm -hmm. no other ship they're jumping into. So this so is a misreading of yes. the situation. Yes. So I, I suppose we could toss that one. Mm -hmm. Could be some. Okay, and in the Daily Nation, we have a cartoon here uh, with the caricature of the CS for Education, Magoha and CS for Interior Matiang calculating how to solve the problem of school fires this year. Mm -hmm. And the solution, I think, is to cane the students. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the matchbox there, uh, and you've got one of the matchsticks, uh, which is a flame already, and, and th in that mathematical equation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a bit dry, a bit dry. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what you guys have to say about that. Yeah. I guess we could toss that one as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, People Daily, who wants to t tackle that one?
uh, People Daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have a situation where it's really political horse trading. On the one hand, you have Ruto. Um, on the other side, you have Raila. In the middle, you have Oka. And the, both sides seem to be wooing Oka with uh, the promise of running mate position. And um, it seems Oka doesn't know where to turn. But mm. this is also a misreading mm. of the situation. The running mate, both for uh, Ruto and for Raila, are going to be gamma candidates. It's non-negotiable. Um, yeah. And we do not have a gamma candidate in Oka. So unless they're just being wooed to be dumped later. Okay, so none of the cartoons were particularly yeah. satisfactory. I'm going to yeah. toss the people daily as well. Um, and uh, to recap, we had a winning headline from the Daily Nation. I, before I go to the quote, you can follow me on Mina and Gemma. That's on TikTok. Yeah. How about you guys? You can follow me at Chaka Sichangi, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I don't have Twitter, so we move. <laughs> okay, okay, right here, for the state. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on your TV screens and pang free to air uh, as well as star times. Mm. But uh, as we finish, let me finish with this quote, the best strategists do the what and let the tacticians do the how. Very nice, right? Have a good evening.